Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, I went ahead and I joined the cluster in the last video. I did pause the video and uh, to make a long story short, it still didn't work. It didn't work, it didn't work. And, uh, and like I said, long story short, what happened to me in this case, uh, let me back up actually. If it doesn't join to the cluster guys, nine out of 10 times, it is just something simple like a mismatch in your settings, okay? So I actually ended up, let's go to system here. Um, I actually ended up taking out the management interface because that is new to me. All right, as you can see, we have both clusters here. I went ahead and I double clicked to uh, get into the settings there. Come on, there you go, buddy. So I took out this management interface reservation because that is very different from 5.4, okay? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we don't have like these gateways or anything like that. We just simply pick an interface to reserve, all right? So I took that out. Maybe I thought I fudged that up. I also wasn't too sure about what if the heartbeats had the same priority, something else I'm going to have to look up because um, in all of the recipes or all the, the guides I've seen, you always set one higher than the other. But in theory, you know, are they are they load balanced between the two if they're zero, zero? I'm not too sure. Uh, it turned out not to be the settings per se. Uh, what it ended up being was my FortiGate wasn't licensed um, at the same level of each other. So let me get to the bat dashboard real quickly, get to the main one. So what happened to me was one of my FortiGates was licensed as a, a FGVM01 license, which has additional resources assigned to it. You can do like 10 VDOMs. You can have a couple more resources here. And the license that I dropped in the original videos was a FortiGate 00 license. So they didn't match up. So it literally just did nothing. So um, instead of uh, watching me stumble through dropping license after license, I have about four FortiGates I had to try. I finally found my 01. And lo and behold, uh, it came up right away. So it does take a few moments, like I said, to synchronize um, the HA cluster. But once everything is in sync, you will see little check marks right here showing you that it is good. Okay. The red ones are the are the heartbeat links and the green are the up interfaces. All right. So um, great. That's awesome. But if you guys remember, we were accessing this remote FortiGate HA by going to 10.0.2.253, all right? Well, that's what was on its port six earlier. Well, we can't do that anymore. Why? It's synchronized with the primary, and now it doesn't know about that IP address, all right? All it knows is the one management interface that we've always had, which is the 254 that we set on this guy right here. So regardless of what FortiGate is primary, this guy right here will always point to the primary, regardless of the FortiGate, I mean. So um, so how do we go ahead and we reserve a management port? Now, I'm used to doing this a certain way in 5.4. I am going to have to look more into how to do it in 5.6, all right? But uh, essentially how we did it in 5.4 is that we set a interface um, that would not be synced, and that's what we do when we reserve a management interface. And I'm going to use, like I said, port 10. And if you look on my topology, port 10 is connected to the same LAN as port 6. Now, uh, why I keep bringing this up? Because one of the big uh, new features of 5.6 is you no longer have to reserve a physical port. You can actually tell it to just use port 6 and different IP addresses. I'm just not going to try that right now, just for the sake of time. Uh, these videos are going a little bit longer than I wanted to. Uh, maybe I'll reserve that for another video. So, so how do we do this? Well, Let's first try and see if it works the old way. So I'm going to go into my FortiGate here, and I'm going to reserve the management interface of 10. Okay? So essentially, when I do this, it's saying, do not sync up the settings for port 10 here. All right? Um, now, if I try to edit the secondary directly, it's not going to let me. Oh, well, and the reason why is because uh, the secondary there should be identical to the primary. OK, so we're still going to have to go in there and make some changes, especially to port 10 that we uh, we went ahead and reserved 
not to sync up its settings. All right, so once we reserve it there through the HA settings, we're going to go to our network interfaces, port 10, and set it like we would any kind of interface management. Now, in 5.4, there is a great limitation here through the GUI. It wouldn't let you do it. The GUI would see it as an IP conflict with port 6, and it would not let you set an IP address in the same range. All right. So uh, let's see if they fixed it in, in 5.6. Um, so I'm going to call this HA, I don't know, uh, management, manage, I don't even care. <laughs> management. I'll make that even shorter. Um, there we go. And I'm going to give it an IP address of 10.0.2.250 with a slash 24. All right. So if I want to administer to this FortiGate, regardless if it's a primary or secondary, I'm going to use the IP address of 10.0.2.250, which lives in this broadcast domain. These are the administrative access. I want to administer it through HTTPS. Uh, ping, I want to be able to ping it, and also SSH. All right. Now, if I go to my command prompt, just to show you a little before and after here, I'm just going to put a ping loop up on that. All right. And then once I go ahead and I hit a commit, in theory, it should go ahead and make that reachable, and which it did. So I forgot to put the T, but there you go. So 10.0.2.250 is reserved on port 10 of this this FortiGate here. All right, I can ping it. I should now be able to go to the GUI. There we go. All right, so 10.0.2.250 will always take me to the GUI of this FortiGate here. But what the heck do we do with this guy right here? Because right now, there's no IP address for it. It's still reserving port 10, all right? But there's no IP address for it. So uh, a couple of ways you can do this. If you don't have console access, um, you can always use the remote FortiGates or the primary FortiGate CLI and access it through there, all right? Um, heck, I'll do that right now, actually. Or if you had a console port, you could console into this bad boy and then configure it through the CLI. Um, but let's say for for simplicity here, I'm just going to go ahead and get the CLI of my remote FortiGate. And I'm going to do an execute HA manage, right? Question mark. It's going to list all the FortiGates that we can administer. All right, zero. I only have one. And now... It's like I'm 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 doing terminal services to this remote FortiGate right here. See the host name? All right. I'm gonna have to log in. And now it's like I'm sitting in front of that console. All right. So I'm gonna do a config system HA and do a show just to show you guys that we have enabled HA management status. So this enables the FortiGates to be able to be managed individually. All right, and this is completely new, I swear it. Um, it used to be a single line to set the, the management interfaces for reservation, and check this out. There's a whole new syntax to learn, so I'm going to have to look into that. Um, but I know that it worked on the last one, so it's going to work on this one. So I just need to simply set the IP address on port 10 to something different. So I'm going to do a config sys interface. I'm going to edit my port 10, which we told not to sync, I'm going to do a show, there's nothing there. So I'm going to set an IP address of 10.0.2.253, I'll just use the one that we were originally using, slash 24, and then set the allow access to ping, um, HTTPS, HTTP, why not? Normally I wouldn't do that, but SSH, all right? And then I'll go ahead and do a commit. As you can see, we did not get a conflict. Now, if you were not in high availability and you try to set an IP address um, on two interfaces that lived on the same subnet, uh, it would give you an error. It would give you a conflict. But here, it's okay. All right? Um, so let's go ahead and test it. All right. Let's go back to our Windows machine. Now I should be able to ping this FortiGate directly. So ping. 10.0.2.253. Yay! There it is. All right. And also, I should be able to come up here and 
get to this four gate always through the GUI by going to 10.0.2.253. All right, there it is. Um, I lost my green, but that's okay. My green theme, not going to cry me a river. But look, we have the remote FortiGate HA, meaning this FortiGate right here directly, and also our remote FortiGate using 10.0.2.250, all right, which is this FortiGate here. So once again, guys, what I did was go to system, go to HA, went into my HA settings on the primary, all right, reserved 10, hit OK. And like I said, this is all new to me with the gateways and everything like that. I'm going to have to look into that, but um, I'm showing you how we did it in 5.4. And then we went to interfaces port 10, and we set the um, management IP address on port 10. All right. So, and then they allowed administrative ones, and then we did it through the CLI. So there you guys go. Uh, that's how you get it clustered and also how you can uh, reach those FortiGates individually. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video right there. I'm going to do one more video before dipping out, and that's just to show you the failover, and then we'll call it a night. So I will see you guys then.